Is 3-Rex Reaper a viable build against Protoss? Does Clam have it in him to win four DreamHack Masters in a row? And what do Cattle Shows and this StarCraft news show have in common? Be sure to stay tuned because we're gonna answer all of these questions today. StarCraft Today. Your favorite StarCraft news show. We saw Cure take out the Zest in the second semi-finals of the GSL this week and that means we have our finalist in Zest versus Cure. Now this is a true possibility of having our first Protoss champion since season 1 in 2017. There has not been a Protoss champion since then which is when Stats won it. Um, it is a possibility however Cure has been showing some extremely powerful gameplay. Very early game focused, we saw all kinds of build orders, even a 3 Rex Reaper which I have to admit is not very viable against Protoss. A single Oracle deals with it. I'm surprised we saw it, but you know, uh, you don't knock it till you rock it. And that's what Cure did. He rocked it and now he can knock it and say, okay, that's actually crap. All of his other builds though made a lot of sense to me. He seems to be the person that is um, the most complete player in the early game. He can play anything. He can play very standard mind drops with a Hellion Scout, with a Reaper opener. He can do that type of stuff, but he can also play the cheesiest of the cheesiest things. And all of them kind of, they bounce off each other in this, in this weird way and they make it very difficult for a Protoss player to respond properly. Now, Zest in the finals, Zest is a player that tends to like to do the same thing many times over and over again, or at least he liked to do that in the past especially in PvT. I'm curious to see how he will hold up against Cure. DreamHack Masters Winter EU has kicked off and the usual suspects are on top of their group. Serral, Rainer, Clem and Maxpex representing group A, B, C and D. Not a whole lot of upsets yet, except for one Russian Protoss player who's been known to barcode a fair amount. It is Strange, who's currently in second place in group B and that is of two PvP wins against Drogo and Skillus. Two players that I think most people, including me, would rate a lot higher than Strange. Strange has been very vocal about his dislike of pvp as well uh, most of the time either proxy rowing proxy gating or doing some other type of weird all-in sometimes a little colossi based or glaive based um, but in this tournament it's actually helping him a fair amount as he took out well two players that in my mind definitely should go to the round of 16 and now might actually struggle a little bit to get there in Latin America, we saw Special take another championship. He managed to take out Cham in the finals, who is a little bit of an upset. He took out Kalazur earlier. Cham has been practicing in Korea and seems to have paid off at least enough to beat Kalazur. Not quite enough for Special yet, but perhaps in the future. Over in Oceania, we saw a very interesting development as it got a little bit British infested there. Um, a lot of the Brits that have a second passport actually made it into the main tournament. In Group B, we had Raza, Risky and Tibo, who all have double passports. Tibo and Raza for Pakistan and Risky for New Zealand. Probe actually getting last place in that group. Big upset as the former champion. Yes, he did win last season and I think he won the most seasons out of anyone, honestly. Um, he didn't even make it out of the group stage, so kind of painful there for the OCE regional champion. Um, then we saw Tibo actually go on into the finals and take out Cedar 4 to zero. So big congratulations to Tibo with his big win in Oceania. And over in Taiwan, after Haas had a fantastic performance in the seasonal finals taking out Zaun, this time he did not manage to win the final and will not qualify for the seasonal finals. Nice taking out Haas in the finals, will secure himself that spot and add another victory to his already large list of achievements. So congratulations to Nice there and those were the champions of the other regions. This week's game of the week is going to be Clem versus Hellraiser on Oxide. Now, Hellraiser had already been showing a lot of air toss in every single matchup. He plays it against Protoss, he obviously plays it against Zerg, and he also wants to play it against Terran, and he showed us that in this series against Clem. On Oxide, he opened up with a Stargate hidden in his main base, which Clem never really spotted, went into Phoenix Colossi, and then started tacking into Carrier, slowly but surely building up that Carrier Ball in honestly something that we don't see very often whatsoever. We don't really see carriers being utilized, especially not this early, against Terrence. Now don't forget that a while ago King Cobra managed to take out Clem with a similar air army and Hellraiser said, well, if he can do it, why can't I do it? And 
Hellraiser freaking did it with a massive plus three air Skytos army. He destroyed Clem, who perhaps had slightly too many Marauders in his army to beat it. But still, this army looks hella scary. And if this becomes a, a real strategy for Protoss players to use, then I'm afraid for a lot of the Terrans on the ladder. This week, as always, also had three ESL Open Cups. Bion versus Zaun in Korea in the finals, where Bion managed to win 3-2. to two. So Zaun was sad. Then he went over to America, Zaun did. Got to the finals and once again got beaten, this time by Maxpex. Maxpex, who got taken out earlier in the day by Gumiho on the European server, which is a little bit yikesy. Gumiho with 300 ping taking you out. And Maxpex wasn't happy with that. Decided, you know what, I'll just win NA instead. And indeed, he did. Over in Europe, however, we had a grand final, which is very common. One of the most common finals, I believe. Big Gape, Hero Marine versus Clem. This time won by Hero Marine. Usually when Clem loses the EPT Cups during the DreamHack Masters, he then wins the DreamHack Masters. So I think this uh, bodes well for his future chances in that tournament. Goblin, who did not manage to qualify for the ESL Pro Tour, and then said, okay, I'll play the ESL Open Cup. Let's see what I can do. Taking out special and taking out Vanya, so two of the top players, uh, special, the top player in his region, and Vanya, one of the top players in the European region. Impressive result afterwards. Sadly, Goblin did lose to Hero Marine, but uh, overall, very well done, Goblin. I'm proud of you, buddy. This week's clip of the week is going to be between Vanya and Solar, in which uh, Vanya has some trouble dealing with Parasitic Bomb and Fungal. Sarah keeping Solar on the back foot. Uh-oh, here we go. Fungal Grove gonna land. Parasitic Bomb as well. Yes, another Fungal. Keep the Fungals going. Oh my goodness, Vanya. No, why are we still on freaking Mutalisks? Why are we running into fights against Infestors? No. All right, Vanya rather upset after that fight, and all of you probably also pretty upset, because this is going to be it for today's episode of StarCraft Today. But not before I tell you what the show kettle and StarCraft 2 new shows have in common. Well, apparently we have the same freaking name, as I found out there's a website called se2day.com, which is a website not dedicated to StarCraft Today, the new show, but a website dedicated to show kettle. Um, which are basically cows, and I think they show them off, and then they get prizes for how beautiful their cow is. They even have a magazine called the Show Kettle Magazine, and it seems to be a nice uh, Show Kettle community over there. So I guess that's what we have in common with cows. Well, thanks everyone for watching, and <laughs> we'll see you all next time for a new episode of StarCraft Today. Bye-bye.